let's get started. So, I want to talk today about React, the past, present, and future, and most importantly, how the future of React is us, the community. React is built around strong primitives. I think we all know that. It's both the beauty and also, in a lot of ways, the biggest weakness of React. It's, by design, very primitive. We have these pieces that we can build and assemble and do incredible things with. But with that comes lots of problems and challenges. And I think it's fair to say that React asks a lot from us as individual developers. We need to understand what it does and doesn't do and build solutions around the things it doesn't so we can build great applications with React's primitives at the core. The primitives weren't always there, though. This has been a generational effort full of generational shifts. And I like to think of the history of React and the relationship with React to the community through these generational shifts in the moments that are centered around specific primitives as they were introduced. The obvious first one is components. With components, for the first time ever, we could reasonably compartmentalize parts of our UI in reusable fashion. And I'm not saying React invented components. I'm just saying React normalized them in a way that we started to really adopt them and see strong traction in applications. We even saw people using third-party packages that bundled and worked with components, such as Material UI, which came out in 2014 originally, as well as things like Storybook, really leaning into this component model and the idea that our components were a thing that we could assemble and reuse even between applications and as packages people could install in their applications themselves. This idea was so powerful that I think it was key to that initial adoption of React. The framework itself was great, but when more and more things around these primitives started to form and we had tools that were exciting beyond React itself, that's when I think React, er, adoption and, more importantly, excitement really started to happen. But with this generation and with these incredible primitives came some growing pains. The biggest one was Redux. Not Redux specifically, to be very clear, but the, the reality of state being a complex problem in a componentized model. <laughs> and the primitives that React provided for this were too localized to the components to really be scalable and work well for gen er, a wider set of applications. It was tough to think about state in one way and have it work for most apps. And as a result, pretty much every app I used in this generation and every code base I worked with used a different set of things with their own different opinions on how they should be used, and it became a bit of a spaghetti nightmare. And I think React understood this, and they listened, and they paid close attention to the community and worked with us, which is why we saw such a huge shift with hooks. The value of hooks wasn't just, oh, you can write your state in an easier way. It was deeper than that. State now had its own level of composability, its own primitives. For the first time, you could NPM install state, not just components. And that's when we saw things like React Query and Motion happen. Framework Motion, in particular, the first commit was two days after hooks were officially announced. And it was really cool to see people have this click moment of, oh, the state being separate from the component means I can ship you state, the concept, and the life cycle around it. And we now, as the developers consuming these things, can build on top of these ideas. When you have good primitives at the core, you can build better, slightly less primitive things around them. And us, as the developers who build applications with these things, can do really incredible things. But that doesn't mean all was solved. I think we all know that. Otherwise, we'd be out of jobs, and AI would be handling it for us. So what were the growing pains here? I'd make the argument that the big remaining one was the server. And we've absolutely seen that in the past, present, and future. I am going to make the argument that both of these frameworks, Next and Gatsby, were the growing pains here. And I'm even going to argue that Next was a little bit worse here, because it looked like they were building good primitives. Get server-side props seemed like a good extension of what you could do with React, where you now have an entry point that runs on the server, and then it hydrates this information throughout your application. But it's not really how React works because there was a strong boundary between the top of your app and your server-side properties, as well as a weird control flow of when the request hits the server, when does the response actually make it to your components, or does it at all? That lack of clear method of actually watching your data go through your app made it so Next was more a pile of hacks on top of it 
rather than a true React framework. And that was scary. As I became a bigger Next fan over the years, what I found was my best Next experience were actually not using Next. It was using Next as a host for my React application and a method for serving server-side endpoints that had better patterns, not necessarily perfect, but better enough that I felt like I was maintaining an app, or building a maintainable application. But the patterns it introduced were incredibly painful, which is why we're lucky that they decided to throw almost all of that away. Turns out, servers are kind of hard, and in a way that was new to the React team. Previously, the problems that React solved were problems that existed in their side of Meta. Meta had real UI application problems, real experience, interactivity, and just general, how do we ship a good app? Those problems, I'm not saying they weren't hard to, but they were hard in a different way, mostly in a way that was at a certain point in the application boundary onwards. So it was not necessarily the right place, team, or mindset to build good server solutions. And I think that's why it took so long. Server components happened to a lot of people's, or a lot of people would argue server components happened really late. Most other frameworks had a solution for this much earlier in their journeys. But I think React needed to better understand the server problems and let us go through the hell of server standards, which you can sit here and convince me all day there is no such thing as fetch on server. You cannot override that which does not exist. <laughs> As such, I think we're in a really cool, unique moment here where after years of iteration on these things and years of playing with what React on a server looks like, I think we're figuring it out now. And the React team's done a great job of working with us to do that. Server components are going to need a lot of our help as this happens. Unlike hooks, you can't, just, you can't just adopt server components. You can't say, OK, I'm on this team at my company that has hundreds of engineers working on our web app. We're building this new feature. We're going to use server components from here down in our existing React tree. This allowed for me personally to push hooks really hard at Twitch when they first happened. I was able to say, OK, this is the pattern that the ecosystem is moving in. These are the tools that we want to use that primarily support and work with hooks. If we want to make the best and most maintainable applications going forward, we should seriously consider and adopt these new patterns. That is much harder with server components because the entry point's different. We just don't own the, or if you have an entry point that existed already, be it you're generating a static web page or you're using Express or you're using some other custom server technologies, you can't incrementally adopt server components the same way. On top of that, they're asking a lot more from us. Because now, as developers of libraries that are building solutions in React, you're no longer just thinking about how these things work on client, or even how they work on client plus one server-side pass. You don't have to worry about this relationship between the server and the client. As much as this is for us to swallow, and as much more work as the maintainers and builders of these libraries are going to have to do, I think that's what got us here in the first place. The strength of the React community comes from these primitives, both what they have and, more importantly, what they're missing, and the relationship that this inherently builds between the React library and framework and team, as well as the community and the library builders who build into it. And we're working really hard to make this future happen. I was hesitant to put this in, but I got bullied by a lot of people. We're working really hard to build one example of this. Tools like S3 just aren't ready for a server component future. So yesterday, we launched Upload Thing, a new tool to make it easier for full stack devs to do file uploads, because the way that it worked before was considerate of the server side exclusively. And there was other tools that were considerate of the client side exclusively. And what server components enables is for us to build patterns that don't just understand server and client, they understand and define a relationship between the two. We have to think a lot more about what we're building when we do this, and React does too. I think that's the really important part that I wanted to push now, is that the React team has to and has chosen to learn from us. In order for React to keep growing and keep innovating in the ways that it's so well known for, it has to understand us even better. 
if you're the type of person that shows up at an event like this because you care enough to come to a place that's titled Reactathon, you probably understand the problems, solutions, and experience of developing in React better than most. And as crazy as this might sound, why haven't you reached out? Why haven't you hit up the React team to talk about your experience with it? I'm sure we've all seen a thread with Dan on Twitter back and forth, but there's more people, and they want to listen. I know that. I chat with them regularly, and they care so much. And that's why this is happening the way it is, and that's why the solutions they are producing have continued to wow us and push us forward in this ecosystem. It's a back and forth constantly where an idea is had, a primitive is made, the community embraces it, uses it, tries it, finds limitations, a long back and forth ensues, a better primitive is built for that specific problem, the same thing happens, and now we're in it the third time with server components. And they're asking more from us than they ever have before. We have to think more about how our bundlers behave and how they code split between the server and the client. We have to think about use server and use client, and one of those terms doesn't mean what it says it means. We have to think about the relationships between all of these things in a way we haven't before. But the result when it works is a level of composability and honestly just an ability to move fast with code you're confident in that I've personally never had before. And that's the bet React is making. They are betting on us to do the hard part, which is convince our tech leads, convince our companies, convince our friends even, that it's worth making this bet and coming along for this crazy ride. This is going to be crazier than the previous ones, where obviously porting from Angular or an old PHP app to React was hard. Adding hooks wasn't too hard. Moving entirely over to it obviously was, but if you had a component and you wanted to use new patterns, you could. Server components are asking for much more buy-in. And not just from us, from other framework maintainers too. Like, I don't think we understand the relationship between Next and React as much. I don't want to tangent too long on this, but that closeness isn't happening because Vercel's this big evil company trying to take over the web. It's happening because the people on React that wanted to push it towards the server and take advantage of what they were hearing from the community realized the best place to do that wasn't necessarily meta. And we're all going to be in similar places there too, where maybe the team we're on at our company is the UI or like design team. It's going to be really hard to sell server components from th those positions. But that's the challenge they're posing to us. We're no longer just front-end developers. We're building infrastructure. We're building backends. We're building services. We're building APIs. We're building database technologies. Next.js, and with it now, server components has almost tricked me going back into my backend roots, because I've been in front-end land now for as long as I can remember, like five plus years mostly doing front-end. But these tools make it so much, so much fun to compose these primitives and to treat these parts of your server, your database, your API, and all these layers, just treating them like you would any other component. It's really freeing in a way. And it's going to be a battle for us to convince others of it. But React's always been along the ride for, or React's always been along for the ride with us in this way. They have given us the tools and the resources and the people and the time that we needed to make these things happen. From silly things like Dan talking on Twitter to more important ones like the working group that is now finally formed so that the React core team can directly interact with the people consuming these things. They understand that this gap is big and arguably getting bigger every day. But that's also what makes it react. These primitives are so strong that the surface area that they can innovate in and cover is just massive. I, I often joke now that for as wide as React is, React Native is 10 times deeper because that community does crazy things to make React work in places I never would have thought of. But that's the magic of React. It lets you do things you've never thought of. So now it's our job to make people think about them. And it's not going to be easy. We're going to be talking to a lot of engineers that are convinced your backend has to run Golang or Rust or it's not really a backend. You're going to talk to a lot of people who have an existing solution that aren't convinced moving to these new ones will help at all. You're even going to have library maintainers who don't want to put in the extra effort and are just going to port their stuff to work in Solid or Svelte anyway, or instead. I think we need to push harder, and I think we need to bet on this as well. The only way server components succeeds 
is if we're bought into more than ever before. Hooks could have worked some amount without us, but server components can't. So much so that React itself went to work with Next to get it as far as it is now. More than ever before, React is relying on us. It isn't just betting on the server, it's betting on the community and our ability and our love of what these frameworks and what these tools enable. They're betting on us to prove to people that this is worth it. And I'm really confident that we can do it. I'm so proud of the work that all these teams have been putting in. They've been doing incredible things. And I think the future is bright. And I hope we take the time to really test out, play with, and understand what these primitives enable so that we can not just understand them ourselves, but we can widen the room and we can next year have a Reactathon that is 10 times bigger because all of a sudden all the backend engineers are here too. So think to yourselves. Who are the people that might not be ready for this? Who are the people who might not even want this? And why not? What can we do to better understand them? What can we do to solve the problems that they have? And how can we work together to build a better web for everybody? I think server components will be a part of that better web. But the only way that will happen is if we all make it happen. So who's with me? Are we going to do this? Server components going to happen? That, that's what I was hoping to hear. That's all I have. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs>